So I decided to talk about something that's a little different, at least for me, and that's going to be, if you were going to create a comic book company for the 21st century, how different would it look from the 20th century comic book companies? And when I say 20th century comic book companies, I'm talking about Marvel, DC, and everybody, you know, big who's been around for a while. I'll even go with Image and other independents, you know, just that people want to you know, get this handled that way. So, the first thing I would do, and this is going to sound crazy, but I think this might be the point of it all. First of all, if I was really looking to build a comic book company for the 21st century, I wouldn't do comic books. I mean, the monthly floppies are a great idea to keep stores in business, but let's keep it 110%. It's not a good business plan, you know, because let's be honest, what you're paying for the entertainment value is not equal. Five dollars for a comic book that you read for five minutes is not equal to what you got. I don't care how good the story is. You know, I'm from the age where stories were, you know, 50, 60, 65, 75 cents. You know, when I got to a buck, that's when I knew that that's probably the highest it should be. You're on newsprint paper, they're good stories, they're fun, and a buck isn't going to kill you. It's not a big thing. But nowadays, people have reached the $5 mark on comic books. And that's where I got to go. That doesn't even make sense. You know, 32 pages of story, which really it's only 22, 23, maybe even 25 pages. Five bucks? You know, why, why would you do that? That doesn't even make any sense. It's kind of one of the dumbest things you could possibly do. Now, that being said, I said, well, Lewis, if you're going to be doing comic books, you can't do comic books. Well, first, I would do it online. And I don't mean like, we're going to sell them online. No, that's not what I mean at all. I mean, we're going to put up comic books free online that people can look at, go through, and enjoy. Now, most of you are going, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well... What are we trying to do? We're trying to make money. Is that what we're trying to do? What are we trying to do? We're trying to get people interested in the thing that we've made. And if we give it away for free, there's no friction to stop them from saying, no, I don't want to see it. At free, it doesn't cost you anything. At free, you can build a fan base much quicker because they can see it. And if it sucks, It sucks. It didn't cost me anything but time. But if they like it, ooh, what's this? I'll check this out. Oh, it's a comic book? Oh, I've never seen this before. Who is this from? Then they get interested. And the second they get interested is where you can turn them from a fan to a customer to an evangelist. See that? Fan, customer, evangelist. Now, the funny part is getting to, you know, a customer, but you're like, Lewis, you're not selling anything. How do you turn them into a customer? Number two, we're only going to do trade paperback collections. Okay, those will be in print. Comic books will never be in print. It is not a good investment. It doesn't make sense. But the trade paperbacks are different. While some people might feel that Well, why would I buy a trade if I'm not going to buy the comic book? See, here's the thing. The trade paperback, you can already make it a better deal for them. Back in the olden days, a company by the name of CrossGen came up with kind of a brilliant idea, which I still think is amazing they don't do it in the U.S. I've seen it in other places, but they don't really do it in the U.S. And they could, if they were really smart, would make fans of people looking at their books. So CrossGen did a series of books. There's two trade paperbacks that you kind of released, two series. And one series focused on a certain group of their comic books, and the other one focused on a certain group of their comic books. So, like, in each of these trades, I can't remember their exact names anymore. I have them in my closet. I think it was Forge and something else, but I can't remember, so whatever. So, Forge had, like, six comic book stories in it. So, maybe... It was like, issue number one of this, issue number one of this. Like, so, six different books. Let's just say Avengers number one, X-Men number one, Fantastic Four number one, 
Thor number one and Incredible Hulk number one. And then maybe one of them was issues one and two. But that was it. Like one of them had two issues. The rest of them had one issue. And that was it. And the book was sold for like, I mean, it was a thick book. So it sold for like $9.99. So you get like six, seven books, you know. So you felt like, oh, I got a good deal. Ten bucks and a trade paperback. I get to test out these books that maybe I've never read before. I wasn't sure. Ten bucks? Yeah, okay. And so they did that. And we're talking, this is the early 2000s. So this is when comic books were at $3 a pop. So, you know, three comic books, nine bucks, ten bucks. You got this trade paperback, you got seven stories for the same price. It was a brilliantly simple idea. And I really don't understand why more people didn't do it. I mean, it's not a complicated thing to do. And it makes sense. I mean, Marvel could be doing it right now with all their books, all their old books, and, like that, and they gave it on slick paper to make it look real nice and everything. I mean, it was just kind of ridiculous what they did. I mean, I wouldn't have done that. Oh, well, who am I kidding? I would have done that. I think that anybody who figured that part out could have made money and built a new fan base. Now, I think it worked better with a smaller company. So if you were like an IDW or image or you know, whatever and you want people to try out several different of your books but to get this trade paperback and then also oh yeah they made it a smaller size too initially it was full size book and then they made a smaller size so like a digest size which i was like oh that's that's even more brilliant because it's used to gonna save some money it fits a certain size it's just it was kind of a brilliant brilliant idea and no one really took it up they did I think they made a bunch of them. And you know what? They got killed because of bad business decisions. Not that business decisions. They're spending crazy monies on cons. Ugh, that's a whole story about that. But people need to stop thinking floppies are the only way to make money. Floppies should be, oh, not even, I don't call it floppies. You should put single issues online for people to download and see. Download and see for free. Don't charge them anything. That's not where you want to get them. I don't want to get them a dollar or something in a month. It's like when people do comiXology, you pay three or four dollars for a comic book that you really don't even own the rights to. So I'm just like, don't do that. That's a waste of time. You know, do the smart thing. Give that away. Give it away for free. Use that as your marketing. Turn the trade paperbacks into that. And then people are going to say, well, Lewis, if that's the only thing with the trades, I got to have like seven, eight books. True, true in that sense. So let's do it in a smaller version. So let's do the exact same thing. We do trades. We sell only trades of the combo we're doing. We get six issues in. We collect as a trade. We put it out there. We give it a good price. And then you do something kind of fun. You add in maybe two issues or something that you can only get in the trade. You can only get in the trade. Maybe it's two like behind the scene issues. Maybe you're telling two issues from the villain's perspective of this thing. Or whatever it is. You put those two issues in the trade just with that stuff. Boom. Now you've got a reason for people to pick up the trade. But Lewis, people are going to take the trade and put that stuff online. Probably. But once again, people are still going to want the trade because it's the only place you can really get the comic. People are going to read it, going to read it. They're always going to do that. No problem. You want them to come to your website, get the traffic. That's what's important. That's what works. Do that. But don't be crazy focused on trying to catch people and get the mindset of they're stealing my comic books. They're stealing, they're stealing money from my pocket. That's never going to work. Because people don't see it as theft. They want something. They want to see it. They want to see if it's interesting. Let them have it. Or if you want to be super crazy, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about this for today. You give away six months free of your book. So like... You put out issues one through six, but blah, 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 wholly free, totally free. Then issue seven comes out. Well, issue one now goes behind a paywall. Oh, you want to you want to read it? Got to pay for the paywall. If you don't want to read it, well, you just got to do that, or you can wait for the trade. Issue eight comes out. Number two goes on the page, and so on and so forth. So it's six months of comics that anybody can read in any given type of any of your titles. You know? But every month, you lose one, quote-unquote. That's it. It's that kind of simple. And if you're saying, but Lewis, what if I do a limited series? If you do a bunch of limited series, you put them up for six months, 
when the, when the sixth one comes, boop, drop off the one. And then continue on. So what do you think? Am I crazy? Probably, but I'm okay with that. Do us a huge favor. Click the like button below. Or if you hate what we're doing, give us a thumbs down. We're good either way. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for your interest. And I'll talk to you all later.